Hello everyone, my name is Lujan25 and welcome back to another redstone video. So today I will show you a project that has been in the works for quite some time now and now that it finally kind of works I am proud to present it to you. But before I show you this machine in detail let me show you the progress that we have made in order to get to this point. So most of you probably know how a traditional snow farm works. So you would have something like a snow comb and then you would mine the layers below him and has, as he will walk uh, on top of that block he will regenerate the layers. But that process has some flaws and that is that you have to have a player nearby. Although this could be also described as not that big of a flaw but and those farms can be quite fast reaching all the way up to 100,000 items per hour which is not bad. But I wanted something that would be fully automatable without a player interaction. So while I was working in this 1.15 world I accidentally came across this game mechanic that if you have a TNT blow uh, near some blocks like snow layers it would actually drop snowballs and well you might be thinking okay that's been in the game for quite some time now probably and well the case is that somewhere in the snapshots for 1.15 this was added again so now that it works I immediately thought of ok let's make a farm out of that. So this was the first prototype of the farm. So the idea was to have a snow golem on this obsidian layer over here. And then I made sure that we would have something to trigger that snow golem into walking from one side to another. And that would be done by having a zombie inside of these cauldrons. And the farm worked in that way that we opened those zombies and we showed them to the snow golems and when they saw them they started walking from one side to another. And well in theory that process worked perfectly but here we have a farm built out of that module. The snow golems are not really that accurate in detecting zombies. It's actually a bit random so you can never know exactly when a snow golem will get attracted by that zombie over there. And that is why I decided to make this new farm over here. So the other farm had a flaw that the TNT would get dispensed even when some of the snow golems were outside causing the snow golems to basically die after some time. So if I show you this concept in action we will see that we have this new part of over here and ok so those snow golems are now making its way to the zombies and they will slowly go back and once they come back to their chambers you can see that they have some string over here and if all of them trigger the string at the exact right time the TNT will fall down and if they don't make it to the chambers the TNT will just explode up in the water source as we saw before. So now we'll see this system in action again so you can see that nothing happened because this one snow golem was outside. But now all of them are making their way back. And let's see if the TNT gets dispensed. Ok so we have a successful detonation of TNT now. The collection system is really quite simple so all we have is some minecarts uh, picking up all the loot. But as I mentioned before the snow golems have the random chance of not following the zombie and that can be really deadly for them because I cannot, I just can't know exactly where they are in all the moments. So they will get aligned here, but when I open the hedges to the other side, we can see that there are not, there are some snow golems that are way behind the others, and those are the ones that usually die off because of the pistons getting pushed into them or some other accidents that happen. So this snow farm produced only 2000 
500 snowballs per hour. So after two more weeks I was about to give up on that idea, but then I thought of another thing. What if we have slimebug flying machines that would push the snow golems around? That way we could more precisely know where the snow golems would be each time and it would also allow me to have more snow golems to fill this entire area. So over here we have a simple TNT duplicator and let me just clear this snow area out then we can prepare the flying machine. So now we can see that the snow golems will start, start uh, the refilling process of the snow layers. It seems that everything is working fine and well in the most cases it is but there is that small chance that one of them will start walking in other direction when this flying machine is going. And if that happens they will, they will either end up in this side or this side and in this current configuration I don't really have a way to fix them to get them back into their chambers. So that was the main drawback of this design because in less than one hour you would only have half of the snow golems inside their, their chambers. So this is where the next design comes in. So the main advantage of this farm is that well we have used trapdoors instead of this, those glass blocks and by using trapdoors we can kind of uh, get those snow golems back into their positions. And the way we do that is really quite simple. So if a snow golem managed to get, to get outside of this chamber, let's say to this side, they will get pushed into this uh, side over here. And once the flying machine is parked here, we will send a zombie, which is here, to aggravate all of those uh, snow golems. And they will start to walk into the direction of the zombie and for a short period of time we will open the, the trapdoors allowing the snow golems to step inside the machine again. And that process, even though it's quite simple, actually works surprisingly well. So after one hour of AFKing you will lose maybe three of snow golems, but this farm will be still functional. So let's see it's running now. So now we can see that the realignment process has been finished and this slime block flying machine will fly to the other side. So now we will see that process in action that I was talking about before. So this time no snow golems were leaving the stations. All of them were realigned and they are getting pushed back. So now you might be wondering, well if you have that system for realigning the snow golems, uh, where do they die off? And the reason is that over here we have those observers. If a snow golem manages to glitch through both the trapdoors and the observer, just as this one might do, okay, but this one is fine, they might end up walking through this gap over here, and when they are here, well, they will just get pushed over here and be crushed into this. Over here we have just a simple pickup system. All the items are getting dispensed into this water channel over here. So this snow farm can produce roughly around 10,000 snowballs per hour, which is not really that bad, but considering that you can get roughly 72,000 items per hour with a single shovel and a player AFK, that is really quite slow. But I still wanted to show you this farm because of the mechanics that I have put in and I think that it still looks quite okay, <laughs> even though it's not really super efficient. If you would like to build this in survival, I would strongly recommend uh, doing a shovel one because of all the snow golems that can die over time and it's simply not worth it for survival. But for a creative project it's a really fun project but whenever you work with entities it's really hard to make something that will keep them alive all the time. So over here we can see one just ex escape the machine from that hole that I told you and he's gone. And one way we, th we could fix that would be to have the retraction mechanism somewhere above here and I think that we still have enough push limit for something like that to be done. But even if we do something like that, there is still a chance that some snow golem will eventually glitch through something that we haven't quite thought of and that it would result in this farm working slower than the maximum speed possible. But that is all I had time for today, so I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, snow farm that I have designed and I will see you in the next video.